Kevin Samuels is dead. How sad. The YouTube Superstar Relationship Bureau made his claim to fame by giving Black women relationship advice that often felt like a tax. A week before his death, Samuel shared a video on Instagram where he said, if you have made it to 35 and you are unmarried, you are a leftover woman. You are what is left. Men know that there is likely something wrong with you. So we have a single Black man telling Black women that unless they are married by 35, they are flawed. Hmm. What does this sound like? Oh, misogyny. Well, the announcement of his death was met with surprise for some and for others, delight. One black woman wrote, I don't mourn for people I don't like. But not everyone feels that way. Let's chat with two feisty women with opposing opinions about the teaching of Kevin Samuel. First, we have relationship expert, marriage whisperer, and best-selling author Dimple Thacker. And then we have Danielle Patterson, attorney at law, founder of Patterson Law Firm, representing victims in personal injury cases. Welcome to the feisty ladies. Kevin Samuels is dead. How do you ladies feel about his work and the legacy he leaves behind? So here's what I think. I think honestly, he was completely misunderstood by women, completely misunderstood. And here's why. His message was spot on. The way he delivered it was not. The, you see, there's a difference between the way men and women speak and the language of man and woman. And I believe that his delivery was very much a direct um, delivery that didn't land for women. But when you look beyond the words and where his heart was and where his... Um, message was it was all about everybody being happy and everybody having healthy happy relationships I don't believe his intention was to um, slander women but I think the way he did it his direct approach was the problem well I'm going to disagree with most of that but not all firstly you cannot separate the man his delivery and the message. You just cannot. That's not how communication works. So I live in a world, and I think that we most do, that it's not, not necessarily just what you say and how you say it. It's also the intent of the words. The mm -hmm. intention was to be a rabble rouser. The intention was to denigrate specifically black women and i'm going to speak about my culture because that is much of what his audience was and who it was geared towards and tell you that it was to denigrate black women while uplifting black men and i think that the two things can coexist in order for me to be happy does not mean that you have to be sad as a matter of fact i agree the point here is for us all to win we can't have a healthy relationship if both parties in the relationship are not healthy. And that was not what was being promoted. And therefore, it was an ineffectual message. And that's really all there is to it. An ineffectual message from an ineffectual man with flawed and skewed viewpoints. And I would 100% agree with some of that in that, yes, a relationship is all about win, win, win. 100%. And I would disagree with his intent. I would say his intent was very much to provide women with a different viewpoint, but the way he did it was not landing. And that for me is, is why I agree with the messaging, but I disagree with the way it was delivered. And therefore he didn't create a win-win for anybody, especially himself. Well, you can't really create a win-win when you're not qualified to deliver the message that you're trying to deliver. And this is a problem that I see in society in general, but very specifically with these social media influencers, because that's all he really was. He wasn't qualified. This is a man with three failed marriages behind him. All we know is that he had broken and failed relationships. He wasn't successful in any of them. And the most evident in his lack of successful relationships is the fact that in his death, he was 
maybe in the bed, maybe not, with a woman that he met literally the night before who had no means to contact his family, who were so distant from him, and that shows that there was a breakdown somewhere, that they didn't know where to find him. And he's out telling black women, again, I'm always going to come back to who he's talking to, black women, and I'm always going to feel a little bit more comfortable talking about black women and how we feel when I'm talking to other black women because I am a black woman and specifically black women in america and i understand dimple you have an entirely different perspective but you are not a black woman a black woman excuse me and you're not in america so which is a totally very very specific kind of life that you have to live and trials and tribulations that you go forth and you experience to be able to be a black woman in america so i'm going to speak from that perspective and say that you told black women that um you're over 35, so you are therefore a useless woman. You are therefore a used up woman, and you are therefore an undesirable woman. If you are overweight, anything other than a size four or five, size six, American size, which is much bigger than y'all size four and size, size six, Dimple, I'm gonna be honest. Okay, so you know, <laughs> so if you're size four and it's a size six, that you are therefore undesirable and not worthy of a quality man. And that uh, you, nobody cares about your education and your accomplishments. And that if you do all of those things and you worry about being you too fat, you're too educated, and you're too successful, all you're going to do is die alone. And guess what? Kevin Selby Samuels, you were three times divorced, estranged from your child, as we know from your back child support orders, that you, uh, the reason that you kind of were broke is because you had so many thousands, tens of thousands of dollars in a real child support. You didn't have a relationship with your parents such that your mom had to find out you passed away from social media, very unfortunately. And I think that that's really a horrible thing, but it also speaks to the man. And so you died alone. And guess what? You were out here and you were sexing an overweight woman, according to your own your own, your own, own qualifications on that. Specifically, he always said anything more than a size four, size six was overweight and undesirable. But that's who you died underneath. Maybe if she really was a size four, size six, she could have pushed you off of her. That's all I'm saying. You know, because what she said was she couldn't get you off of her. Because I know I could have got him off of me. Oh, brilliant. You are just brilliant. And I just... <laughs> Hands up and respect to you because 100%, 100%, I am not a black woman. I don't live in, in, in the USA and I can't even begin to fill your shoes or walk your path. Okay, so one of the things that I completely agree with what he said was he was interested in women being happy. Though that's something that I heard him say over and over again. He talks about women being happy and about women um not being able to hear the truth, but yet they expect men to hear the truth all day long. And honestly, I really believe that sometimes women can't handle the truth. Even when it's as direct as possible, they can't handle the truth. And these are the same women in their 35s and their 40s who are single, who aren't happy, right? And so for me, his heart was all about happiness and love. So 100%, he did say that women over 35 are leftovers. And the truth around that is, I actually agree with that, that women over 35, if you haven't figured out how to have a healthy relationship at the age of 35, 40, then there's some work to be done. There's some absolute work to be done. Okay, so I will give you that I think that we all are a constant work in progress. However, I don't believe that our entire, a woman over 35 not being married means that she has not had successful relationships. Again, the premise is therefore false. So what we know is that women have the most healthy relationships. We have them with each other. We may not be able, and there are some, and I'm not gonna say, you know, we, because I've had successful relationships. So there are a couple of faulty premises. One, not everyone wants to get married. That's that's the first. Not everyone mm. wants to get married. The second is that not everyone want not every woman wants to get married to these men that are available. So, and that's the thing that I think has bothered me the most about the Kevin Samuels argument is because it's all about what the women need to do and what how the women need to change and how the women need to up themselves and how the women need to level up. But 
the men have gotten exactly one tidbit of this, which is to be a high valued man. Yet none of them understand that the vast majority of men out here are not high valued men. That's what they seem to, the disconnect seems to be. Cause I'm sorry, I don't want Basil from up at the corner that's still living on the baby mama couch, but they not together and he don't pay child support cause he's still trying to get himself together cause he was coming out this rap career, but he's 50 years old. Again, I don't want Kevin Samuels. 56 years old, still living in an apartment leased by his cousin because his name is not on the lease. So that's also why they didn't know whose apartment it was um, when he passed away. He wasn't a high valued man by his own definition. He was coming with too many pieces of baggage, too much turmoil, and he was not right with himself. And I say, you can't preach what you can't live. So this false prophet, I'm not here for it. You know, women spend a lot of time um, criticizing and critiquing men but then and they moan about the tone in which they're spoken to and yet the number of times that women speak in a tone that is criticizing and critiquing now for me when we criticize and critique anybody it's we've got to be careful women constantly use um language like um it's you know oh only men would do say that and typical man and really belittling men and actually when the role is reversed they can't take it and so for me that it's about it being equal it's about saying Yes, you can be a strong woman, but you don't have to put men down in order to be that strong woman. Yes, you can be a strong woman and honor and respect men and women. So that for me is the piece that I agree with. But how do you have that message when you're, the way that you deliver that message is to put women down? So therefore, let's say, I'm just gonna say, let's say, it. let's say that was the message. Let's say it was, because I don't, I don't believe that was the message. Yes. I don't see it as him putting women down. I actually see it as him um, helping us see a different perspective. Because when we take away all the, all the, um, when we look behind the words, when we look behind the words, why did he spend so much time and so much effort talking to women? I mean, he initially started off giving advice for men. Right. And then he yes. moved on to women. Why, why? Did, why did he do that? Why? Um, very simply. That's very, that's actually very easy. It's called marketing and that men actually don't fall for that. I believe also that Samuel was also uh, negligent in how he um, delivered his message, meaning he did irreparable damage to the individuals that he was targeting, specifically black women. He did irreparable damage to relationships between black women and black men. He didn't help them. He helped to destroy our community. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for your feisty opinions about the controversial Kevin Samuels. It seems as though Dimple believes there was merit in his messages, despite being delivered inappropriately. And Danielle believes the result of his teachings was a resounding slap for black women. What do I think? I honestly couldn't bring myself to watch any of his videos at any time during his teaching because I'm not desperate to hear a random man tell me how to define my life. If a man is not pledged to stand beside me in life, his opinion doesn't matter. And honestly, if a man wants me to even listen to his opinion, he better put some sugar on it. Because black women have had enough of being abused and criticized while black men call it tough love. Why is it that we black women need so much tough love? No man should beat us down and tell us he's doing it to help us become better. Do we even have a right to be bitter when you leave us with such a nasty taste in our mouth? Black women don't need tough love. We're already tough. You hardened us. You made us like this. We just need love.